All right, now we will start on doing the the shear diagram and the moment diagram. And just to point out, this is A and this is B. So let's start off. So if we were to draw the moment or the shear diagram, so this is the shear force and this is the X or the direction that way. So what's the shear in this part of the beam? Well, the A component is 400 kilonewtons. So that means the shear in this part until it reaches another force is 400 kilonewtons. And we don't reach another force until we get right here. Whoops. So that is 400 kilonewtons. So there is a shear force all the way across here of 400 kilonewtons. Now the, the shear starts to change in this area. And we can't treat this as one force, we have to treat, treat it because each part of each each little section of this, each very minute section of this has a different shear than any other part of it. So, so the simplest way is to draw the line straight down from it and we will see that that this is a thousand kilonewtons so the shear changes by a thousand kilonewtons and it's going down a negative thousand kilonewtons. So it will go down to uh, 600, a negative 600 kilonewtons. Kilonewtons. So that's probably somewhere about right there. So then we just connect these lines. Oops, not close enough. So we connect those lines and now this part of the beam, it only has a force of a, of a negative 600 kilonewtons until we get to that point. So we get to that point. So that is another 600 kilonewtons. And notice that our by is 600 kilonewtons. So that that we did good. So so getting to this point of a negative 600 kilonewtons meant that we did it right so far. So let's move on. So that's our that's our uh, shear diagram. Let's move on to our moment diagram. Moment diagram. And let's use green. So, moment. And this is our X. Let's try to make it a little straighter. So, let's just put in our points. Whoops. I remember all the moment is is the integration of the shear diagram are the shear force versus the distance. So right here, there's no area. So right here, remember the the moment is just the area under the line. And right there, there's no area, so this is zero. So the area until the, the area, until this point is the, I mean the, the total area under this, that's 400 kilonewtons times 2 meters. So that gives us 800 kilonewton meters. So we'll say maybe that's point right there. Again, that's 800 kilonewton meters. So all the way right there. So that is a straight line. The reason it's a straight line is because the area is increasing equally. So it's linear. Now, we gotta find what this distance is. What distance is that? So if we remember that, that these two triangles are the same, except they're just, this one's much smaller than this one. So if we know what this distance is, which is two meters, and we know what this length is, which is a thousand kilonewtons, and then we know what this distance is, then we can find out what this distance is. So we're going to call that x. So we have 2 meters over 1,000 thousand kilonewtons. Oops. Kilonewtons. And that must equal this distance, x, divided by whatever this distance is, 400 kilonewtons. 400 kilonewtons. So that is equal to our x is equal to, so if we move the 400 over there, so we get 800 
um, kilonewtons, meters, divided by a thousand kilonewton meters, we just get x, x is equal to 0 0.8 meters. So erase that. So this distance is 0 0.8 meters, and that means this distance is 1.2 meters. So if we remember that the area of a triangle is the one half the height, which is 400 kilonewtons, kilonewtons times the base, which is 0 0.8 meters, that will give us a 160, 160 newtons, kilonewtons, kilonewton meters, sorry. So now we add 160 kilonewton meters to find out where it is on this point. So 800 plus 160 is, is 960. So we'll say maybe right there, 900, actually, so we'll just go straight across. That is 960, 60, whoops, 960 kilonewton meters, that point right there. Now notice that it's the most of the area is coming from this side, so this is still pretty much a straight line. But this point right here, there's not very much area being added, so this is kind of a flat line, so it's kind of it's actually kind of curved. It's no longer, I, I mean, that looks like a straight line, but it's curved. So pretend it's curved. You'll definitely see it when we do the next spot. So now let's find the area right here. So let's get the area of that. So that is, again, 1 over 2 times the height, which is a negative 600 kilonewtons times 1.2 meters, 2 meters. And that is equal to that is equal to um, 360 kilo, the negative 360 kilonewton meters. So now we subtract 360 kilonewtons from 960, and that should give us 600. So fine. So that's probably four. So this is probably six. So we just go across right there. So that's 600, 600 kilonewton meters. Now you may be tempted again to draw a straight line, but it's curved, remember, because there's very little area being added right here, so that's still kind of a straight line, straight line that way. But there's a lot of area right here, so this is going up pretty quickly. So it's going up. So then to connect these, you just draw a nice little curve. And that doesn't, re it's not really curvy, but... So we got that nice curve, and then we just need to find this area. And that area is the negative 600 kilonewtons times 1 meter. And that's a negative, so that's then a negative 600 kilonewton meters, and that will take us right there. Uh, this was a pretty messy video, I apologize for that. Uh, the really th the things you need to really focus in on is why is this a straight line? Why is this curved? Why is that curved? And hopefully I did a decent job in explaining that that most of the area is being is being added in right here, where this is adding very little area. So that's pretty much a flat to plateau right there. And I mean, there's just very little area relative. And again, this is flat like that. I don't know, just really focus in on why those are straight and curved lines. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the description or the comments below.